The intent of this video is to review the major shift in World War II German submarine deck gun armaments and tactics as the war progressed. This is a part 7 video from the channel's World War II Bombers vs. Submarine Battle of the Atlantic series. During the spring of 1943, German submarine losses due to aircraft were greater than surface ships, as discussed in this May 1943 meeting minutes document between Karl Dernitz, Adolf Hitler, and various other high-ranking German U personnel. The source of these discussions is the post-war translated Führer conferences on matters dealing with the German Navy in 1943. All of the images shown in this video are declassified. This image shows Dernitz inspecting U-94 while docked at the Saint-Nazaire French port. The Germans changed their U-boat aircraft engagement policy in the spring of 1943 as defined in this April 1945 Chief of the Air Staff Intelligence Historical Division document, the Anti-Submarine Command. In earlier engagements, German U-boats would almost always dive if spotted Allied patrolling aircraft. The new policy mandated that U-boats would stay on the surface and fight it out with the attacking aircraft. Dernitz issued Standing War Order 483, which instructed German U-boats traversing the Bay of Biscay to stay on the surface and fight the attacking aircraft with their anti-aircraft guns rather than submerging. The Germans converted four U-boats as dedicated anti-aircraft flak platforms to act as submarine escorts, much like fighter escorts for bombers. The dedicated escort U-boats were fitted with additional anti-aircraft armaments, as shown in this image. This map represents the German U-boat and Allied merchant shipping losses for the month of May 1943, extracted from the Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. The blue circles are merchant ships sunk due to German submarines. The red solid circles are U-boats sunk or probably sunk due to aircraft. The hollow red circles are U-boats damaged by aircraft attacks. The concentrated surface engagements between Allied aircraft and U-boats in the Bay of Biscay are clearly visible on the map in this circled area. There were various guns adopted by the German U-boats, none of which were standard, as shown in this image from an April 1944 Chief of the Naval Operations document, German and Japanese submarines and their equipment. The anti-aircraft flat guns are classified based on their caliber, as shown in this image from an April 1945 SINPAC Bulletin Japanese Anti-Aircraft Material. Gun barrel diameters at or above 75 mm are to be classified as heavy flak. Gun barrel diameters between 20 mm and 40 mm are considered medium flak. The main German heavy flak guns were either the 88 mm or the larger 105 mm deck guns. Although the 88mm U-boat deck guns were the same caliber as the famous ground-deployed 88mm gun, they were different and did not have interchangeable cartridges. The U-boat's large caliber 88 or 105mm heavy flat guns were rarely used against aircraft. The heavy caliber deck guns are considered ineffective against attacking aircraft as the projectile's fuse cannot be set below 5,000 feet, as discussed in this June 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. This would require an unlucky direct hit. The report goes on describing other factors of the 88 105 mm deck guns as being manually directed and operated, having a slow rate of fire, and difficult to train and fire upon a fast and low flying aircraft. German U-boat POWs indicated they received inadequate anti-aircraft training, which contributed to the ineffective anti-aircraft fire. The submarine's heavy caliber deck guns are used for sea-to-sea -sea engagements and not effective for sea-to-air engagements. This chart outlines the various parameters of the 88mm and 105mm German U-boat large caliber deck guns, including the type of shell, rate of fire, muzzle speed, max range, practical range, shell weight, fuse type, number of rounds, and the quantity of ammo carried. Early war German U-boats were generally armed with a single heavy caliber deck gun and one or two medium caliber anti-aircraft guns. The armament of submarine U-162 consisted of a single 105mm heavy gun, a single medium flak 37mm gun, and a single 20mm flak gun, as described in this report of air interrogations of survivors from U-162 sunk on September 3, 1942. The POW stated that this was a standard layout for a 750-ton class U-boat. 
The sole survivor from the sinking of U-512 in October 1942 indicated that its armament was the same layout as U-162's. U-701 carried a single 88mm and a single 20mm gun. U-164's armament consisted of a single 10.5 centimeter gun, a single 37 millimeter gun, and a single 20 millimeter gun for anti-aircraft attacks. The POW stated the 20 millimeter was not trusted. Four MG-34 machine guns were also carried. The MG-34's ammo is in the 7.92 millimeter light machine gun cartridge. Machine guns in various calibers would be mounted on the conning tower like in this view, this image, U-564, and this view of U-760. By mid-1943, most of the U-boat's large caliber deck guns were removed. This was due to little or no opportunity to use the deck guns to attack unprotected Allied ships or aircraft without great risk, as shown in this image. Convoys were well protected. Surfacing to fire the deck guns would be considered suicide. The large caliber deck guns could be replaced with the more effective 37mm anti-aircraft guns as shown in this sketch. The genesis for more effective U-boat anti-aircraft armament can be traced to the September 1942 Reich Chancellery Conference Meeting Minutes as shown in this document. German Rear Admiral Lang recommended 15mm anti-aircraft guns be fitted to U-boat conning towers. Adolf Hitler considered the 15mm guns not effective enough against Allied bombers. The upsized 20mm cannons were discussed. It was also recommended that 3.7cm and 5cm anti-aircraft guns be fitted to U-boats. Adolf Hitler indicated misgivings of the 5cm guns due to Air Force experiences. Neither the 15mm nor the 5cm guns were ever fitted to German U-boats. POWs from the sinking of U-67 in July of 1943 indicated that multiple U-boats had been fitted with two quadruple 20mm and a single 37mm flat gun. The addition of quadruple 20mm anti-aircraft batteries to U-boats was discussed in the May 1943 German Navy meeting minutes. Conning towers were rebuilt to mount the new armaments. These flak U-boats are to remain on the surface and fight it out with aircraft. Traversing submarines would be met and escorted by an anti-aircraft submarine. U-67 would dive if an Allied aircraft was sighted by binoculars. If an aircraft was sighted by the naked eye, they would remain on the surface and fight back. This chart outlines various parameters for the 20 and 37 millimeter anti-aircraft flak guns. The rows indicate the type of guns as quad, twin, or single mount 20 millimeter or 37 millimeter single cannons. The columns are the gun's parameters as discussed earlier. This chart lists additional parameters including the gun's arc travel and the number of crew members assigned. Only the U-boat's anti-aircraft guns included pl armor plates to protect the crew members as discussed on this chart from the armament section of the reference shown earlier. The 20mm quadruple gun crews are protected by armor plates ranging from 5 to 15 millimeters in thickness. The 37mm gun crews are protected by armor plates ranging from 15 to 20 millimeters in gauge. Two 20mm dual guns and a single 37mm anti-aircraft gun is shown in this side and top view image. The 20mm single, dual, or quadruple mountings are the U-boat's main anti-aircraft armament. They are considered very effective, except against heavy bombers. The 37mm anti-aircraft gun can be readied in 3 minutes and secured for diving in 1 minute. Let's take a look at U-boats with modified anti-aircraft armaments. This image shows a mounted 37mm cannon with armor. This image shows a U-boat with its 88mm deck gun replaced with a 37mm anti-aircraft gun. U-744 with two dual 20mm and a single 37mm gun. 37mm gun with armored plate stowed. U-1023 with two dual 20mm and a single 37mm cannon. U-103 unarmored deck gun. 
Illustration of a single 37mm and two single 20mm guns. U889's 37mm twins with armor stowed. Only a few U-boats were fitted with dual 37mm armament. The U-boat is also fitted with two dual 20mm flat cannons. Notice this U-boat doesn't have a heavy deck gun. Dual 20mm flat guns. The conning tower is located here. The two dual 20mm anti-aircraft flat guns are mounted on the aft bridge platform. The twin 37mm anti-aircraft flat guns are mounted on the winter garden platform. This configuration is represented by both U889 and U995. The winter garden deck platform level is shown in this view. U-745's quadruple 20mm flat guns with deployed armor panels is in this image. Side view of one of the four built flak escort U-boats. Front view of the quadruple 20mm flat guns with armor. Side view of the quadruple 20mm flat guns with armor. Rear view of the quadruple 20mm flat guns with armor. U.S. boarding party capturing U-505 on June 4, 1944. Note that it is not outfitted with a heavy deck gun. U-505 getting ready for delivery at the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry with a standard single 37mm and two twin 20mm anti-aircraft armaments. To counter the new U-boat anti-aircraft armaments and fight back tactics, Allied aircraft were provided guidance as discussed in this image from a May 1943 anti-submarine monthly intelligence report. The choice to engage the U-boat or not rests with the aircraft commander. He must take into account his tactical position relative to the submarine. The aircraft commander is reminded of his primary mission, that is to destroy submarines. Aircraft are difficult targets for the U-boat gunners. U-boats are poor gun platforms. Attack the U-boat head-on and weave. Fire the plane's machine guns at the U-boat gun crews or suppress their returning fire. The point regarding attacking the U-boat head-on is discussed in the countermeasure section of the June 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. Most of the anti-aircraft guns on a submarine are mounted aft of the conning tower. The conning tower will block guns aimed forward at a low-flying aircraft. So how effective was the German U-boat fightback policy and the added anti-aircraft armaments? The German Navy evaluated the combat effectiveness of the U-boat's 20mm anti-aircraft guns in this July 31, 1943 Navy meeting minutes. Planes were not brought down by multiple hits from the U-boat's 20mm quad guns. This image from an August 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report outlines the results of 25 engagements between aircraft and U-boats that remain on the surface and fought back during August of 1943. Six submarines were sunk at the cost of nine aircraft destroyed and additional nine aircraft damaged. Bomber Command recognized the valor showed regardless of the peril they faced. While the fightback policy was in effect a little over three months, from May 1943 through mid-August 1943, Allied aircraft sank 26 U-boats and damaged another 17 for a loss of 32 aircraft. The U-boat loss rate was unattainable and the fightback order was rescinded and in retrospect, a failure. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider commenting, liking, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.